Good morning, distinguished guests and judges. We are Team S011. This is today's agenda. We will first go through the operations of Carrier Logistics Limited, alongside an evaluation of both their financial and non-financial performance. We will then move on to identifying potential issues and offer our proposal for further action to resolve them, alongside a plan for implementation and projected impacts. As a quick introduction, our team comprises four members, Rex, myself, the team leader, and next to me, Anson, Lucas, and Keith. Hence, with introductions out of the way, let's start with a brief insight into the company in question, Kerry Logistics Network Limited, or KLN for short. Lucas, on to you. Thank you, Rex. KLN is the largest international logistics shipping company listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, and it has the greatest presence in the Asia Pacific region. It serves 59 countries and regions worldwide. And in 2021, it has been acquired a 51% stake by SF Holdings, a logistics company in China, who has become their strategic partner. There are two major business segments. The first one is integrated logistics, which serves the supply chain and inventory management. The second one is international freight forwarding. Its revenue has increased fivefold in 2021 and taken and has taken over as a major segment for generating profit. It facilitates shipping for international customers from start to end through multimodal transportation. A major concern is how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted KLN's operations. While supply chain disruptions have impacted the IL segment, on the other hand, IFF has enjoyed exponential growth in revenue from 1 billion to 5 billion as a result from increasing demand for flexible supply options and reflecting the importance of KLN's in-depth industry know-how and combating the market uncertainty. Next, we will move on to evaluating the group's financial ratio performance. Uh, as you can see, KLN has achieved staggering revenue and impressive profit levels in 2021. This was a positive change from the previous year's financials, which were heavily impacted by the pandemic. KLN also experienced a large growth in their, in, in their profitability ratios, specifically in their group's gross and net profit margins. These growths can be attributed to a more efficient operating expense management, as well as a higher turnover rate. Moreover, the increase in the return on average assets ratio implies that the firm utilized existing assets well to boost profits. From all this data, it can be seen that KLN has generally good profitability. Their flexibility and adaptability allow them to quickly take advantage of financial opportunities in the new market environment, maximizing gains. And now moving on to their management efficiency. KLN did well by increasing their average total assets turnover ratio by 0.56 times. This can be attributed to the removal of obsolete equipment allowing their existing assets to work at a higher capacity, generating revenue at a more efficient, in a more efficient manner. In terms of their short-term liquidity ratio, uh, KLN's current ratio has increased slightly and has hit the market safe benchmark. From this ratio alone, this suggests that the company should not have any short-term debt playing problems. However, a point to note is that their cash ratio in 2021 has dropped, unfortunately, from an already low point. As a result of liabilities increasing with increased growth, the company has insufficient liquid cash and cash stockpiles, incurring risks of insolvency in case of crises, which unfortunately are extremely common in the volatile market environment. At least, KLN enjoys some excellent long-term solvency, having a heightened ability to meet interest payments as they come due, reinforced by an increase in their time interest earned ratio. However, another point to note is the company's heavier use of debt financing in 2021, which may pose problems later on in external market environments, although it cannot be regarded as an immediate threat. And lastly, as a quick evaluation of the stock, KLN stock has generally done pretty well over the past year, with an increase in the EPS and a decrease in the uh, price to earning ratios, uh, which is indicative of KLN's generally overall good performance and attractiveness to investors. As a quick recap, 
the table above shows generally good changes across the board in terms of financial ratios, with only some small concerns and some mixed parts and some question marks appearing in two areas of short-term liquidity and long-term solvency. So now, with finance recapping done, let's hand it on to Anton with a SWOT analysis. Thank you, Rex. Kellan's biggest strengths lie in its pre-existing strong Asian presence, being amongst uh, the largest third-party logistics providers. They also have significant leverage in their international expansion and growth, in large part due to their partnership with SF Holdings, further enhancing their distinct market advantage. Their improvement areas include their limited international presence outside Asia currently, though this is already changing for the better due to recent growths. Furthermore, they risk over-centralizing core information infrastructure, with the lack of risk diversification leaving them vulnerable to any data breaches or system failures. Kellen's opportunities include leveraging their existing partnership, as aforementioned. AI and technological integration will also be extremely beneficial, providing improved automation and analytics. As the COVID pandemic disrupted the global supply chain, Kellen can also take advantage of this increased ad hoc demand for supply chain solutions. However, due to recent m and partnership has diminished Kalen's company control. They should also continue to monitor the Russian-Ukraine war situation as sanctions affect their daily transcontinental business activities. Kalen must also address cybersecurity threats, as any data breaches can result in jeopardizing company information technology. And lastly, due to the volatile nature of the logistics market, Kalen must be alert of any new changes or threats that may arise at all times. Overall, Kellen has sufficient finances to invest in R&D for differentiation. Its strengths lie in its sustainability initiatives and Asian presence. But its centralized IT data system and risks arising from the M&A partnership raise points of concern. From our quantitative and qualitative analysis, we have identified four key areas of improvement in Kellen's operations. Firstly, in their ethics and sustainability during operations. Secondly, in the security of their data and in their databases. Thirdly, their operational efficiency in terms of both workers, labor, and financial utilization. And lastly, the lack of innovative new technology and the consistent reliance on outdated technology. Hence, to tackle these identified problems, we would like to introduce our solution. The, the SIMP approach. approach. The sustainability, innovation, and motivation protocol. SIMP involves devising strategies and protocols to resolve problems faced in each of the aforementioned areas alongside a clear implementation plan. With a focus on enhancing the critical areas of efficiency, cost, and quality of service for the target demographic of large corporations, SIMP will serve to improve the company's position in the market and improve its future operations. Now, on to Lucas to talk about sustainability. Regarding sustainability, KLN's truck feed is currently major dieselly powered. However, KLN has an existing solution, which is to replace 300 of their trucks with electrical trucks, providing a source of renewable energy. However, while this is a good step forward, it may not be the most effective solution because IFF is taken over as the most prominent segment. And this relies on transcontinental shipping. Therefore, KLN should also address environmental issues regarding the oceanic freight forwarding. Due to usage of unsustainable heavy cargo oil, KLN has emitted large amounts of nitrogen and sulfur dioxides into the environment. And when in contact with water, this may cause harm to marine life due to acid rain. And in 2021 alone, KLN has emitted over 1,000 tons of these emissions. Therefore, our short-term solution to this is for KLN to discuss with its shipping partners to use fuels with less sulfur content, hence reducing emissions. However, our long-term proposal is to start experimenting with wind renewable energy. And this is proven feasible because Sweden has successfully dis developed a wind-powered cargo vessel that can help reduce 90% of emissions. And this will present a win-win solution because it can also save energy costs when the technology is established. And lastly, since KLN has a truck fleet of 6,700 vehicles, 
only 300 has been changed into electric. Therefore, we suggest that the rest of the fleet can be transitioned into hybrid trucks. The expected impact quantitatively is to greatly reduce and at the end, eliminate any sulfur content from the fuel. Qualitatively, we will aim to lower the emissions and hence be more sustainable and improve public relations and investor appeal to the ESG, environmental social governance. And lastly, it will promote long-term efficiency and financial gain. However, some long-term R&D costs and time to transition may occur. And the ultimate goal is to reduce the environmental footprint of KLN by gradually replacing the marine and land shipping options that it currently uses. As mentioned in the, oh, as mentioned in the SWOT analysis, KLN relying on a centralized internal information system makes it very vulnerable to any cybersecurity breaches, such as phishing attacks, ransomware, and more. As observed, disguised malicious emails can later latch onto the company, demanding ransomware and creating chaos, threatening vital company information. KLN, as a large service provider, should be keeping up to date with the newest technology to implement the most secure cybersecurity measures. In terms of innovation, SIMP has two main areas cybersecurity and AI. KLN can look into an internal security management team, integrating practices such as regular cybersecurity risk assessments, implementing strong access control and endpoint security, and having security incident responses, being able to quickly respond to any threats. And any problems identified can then be outsourced to third parties using the newest technology to ensure the most secure cybersecurity measures. Innovative AI is also great for route optimization, saving on time and resources, which can then be allocated elsewhere. And this creates maximum cost effectiveness with no major overhauls to their uh, operations. Developments in AI have also led to deep learning algorithms, which would be perfect for a chatbot, providing quick and accurate responses. And overall, KLM will be able to provide efficient shipments and high quality customer service, both at a lower cost with AI. Our innovative solutions should increase security against data breaches, improve quality of life, and increase long-term efficiency. Next slide. These solutions aim to improve various operations, general user experience, and efficiency by saving resources and time by lessening manpower in repetitive tasks. Now, moving on to motivation, which consists of both financial and non-financial strategies to address issues of low relative pay and work monotony. To tackle low relative pay, Kellen should consider uh, financial incentives using commissions and performance-based incentives to reward employees. As Kellen already utilizes pre-existing profit-based incentives and discretionary bonuses, these strategies won't be unfamiliar to them. In order to directly tackle pay dissatisfaction, Kellen should incorporate salary benchmarking, setting more favorable salaries than the rest of the market, targeting the talented and well-performing employees to increase overall talent density. Though overall wage expenses will increase, investing in talent and hard work will inevitably yield massive financial benefits. For qualitative strategies, the primary focus of KLN should be reducing repetitiveness through work diversification, consisting of implementing new delivery routes or delegating minor work duties. KLN should also implement challenges like merging jobs to diversify work. Since most of the supply chain rules are relatively straightforward, employees can remain engaged without being overexerted. Overall, using monetary incentives and refreshing work environments will be integral to significantly boosting employee motivation and work efficiency. Implementing financial awards will evoke corporate care, while job enrichment strategies remotivate them to improve work efficiency. Ultimately, these two factors are the main goals of this segment. The three aspects of SIMP have different impacts and priorities. Here's the implementation plan of when we expect each task to be completed. Motivation is the top priority with continuous mo employee mo demotivation hindering efficiency. And we have allocated one year to this task. Ne the next priority would be the implementation of AI and cybersecurity. As integrating new technology would likely be time consuming, we have allocated two and a half years. And sustainability, sustainability is the last vital aspect. As technological availability is still uncertain, we have allocated one and a half years and beyond in terms of our five year plan. Our projected impacts is the investment of capital, which uh, needs to be invested for new projects, and investor conflicts, which have to be resolved. In terms of long-term impacts, we expect profit maximization, efficient ma maximization, and safeguarding of the economic position. 
So we have allocated the most resources to sustainability and innovation, as these are the most time-consuming uh, segments. And here are our projected revenue levels, uh, as you can see, are increasing every single year due to our SIMP approach. And here's our projected expenditure, where we expect the most resources to be allocated uh, during cybersecurity what? development and AI. Okay, thank you, Team S011. Hi, Team. Um, Hello. In your SWOT analysis, you talk about the weaknesses. One of the key, one of the point that you mentioned under that uh, particular uh, area is called the M and A risk. Can I know what 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 is the risk that that you are referring to? So uh, essentially. Kaelin has been acquired by SF Holdings at a 51.5% stake. So essentially, SF Holdings has all the decision-making uh, advantages within the company. As such, Kaelin actually loses some of the control and dis over the decision-making processes, which may affect the overall direction the company's heading in. But uh, if, if you are saying that, you mean that uh, SF actually got a different strategy that uh, KLN is currently implementing, right? You have this kind of feeling or you are, you have did some research and note this is the case. So to address that, although yes, SF Holdings and KLN have similar current directions. However, obviously the future is very unpredictable. And also, you know, they're both separate companies to begin with. So obviously in the future, uh, we due to the volatile nature of the logistics market, we, it's, uh, it's unclear whether they'll actually follow through that, the same direction moving forward. Uh, maybe for me, it's a follow-up question on that. So, uh, because I, I, I can see that you already identified say, identify a stress and also the weakness on, on this area. So what is a response in particular when they say potentially there may be a conflict between the controlling shareholders and also the minority shareholders? Do you have any response on that? Yes, so um, regarding our uh, response to this, since KLN is a publicly listed company on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, when there are many, uh, when there's a very large decision making uh, process, we can have a shareholder, we can hold shareholder meetings or a sort of a voting process so that all shareholders' uh, opinions will be considered throughout this. Uh, well, uh, the same approach you have suggested, definitely is very comprehensive. But at the same time, we say very aggressive. Uh, but have you foreseen any possible obstacles or difficulties that you may encounter when you try to Im implement such an approach? Uh, so the two main areas for, let's say, obstacles are, are both the R&D costs and also the time used to implement uh, these uh, measures. So of course there will be some other, perhaps, uh, smaller problems in terms of investor clashing in conflict of interest. But uh, as you can see, the biggest obstacle for us is actually the longer implementation plan for some of the sustainability and also using some, let's say, less developed technologies in the wind-powered um, uh, vessels. Uh, with the high R&D and uh, research development funding, this needs to be a consideration for the business in terms of how to allocate the resources and exactly when to do this as well, uh, depending on the situation uh, financially for the company. So um, again, it's just uh, the high R&D costs and the time frame used for allocation for all these three uh, strategies, I guess you could say. Uh, and some smaller other problems include some perhaps uh, directional clashes, conflict of interest inside. But again, all of this can be resolved through constant uh, shareholder meetings uh, and careful planning and allocation, yeah. So just a follow-up question. So um, I see you prioritize uh, uh, the solutions here, right? So uh, you mentioned that the sustainability solution takes a very long time, but why not you take, this, uh, uh, take the need of having the solution in year one instead of like postponing to year five? Yes. 
Okay, so uh, we have a couple of responses to this question. So firstly, it's uh, due to the fact that the sustainability technology that we've suggested is perhaps not fully developed and is not fully utilized in the market well. So we believe that actually waiting a couple more years for it to be fully developed, to be fully implemented in other markets as well, perhaps as like a more of a test, will, will guarantee more success for the company. Uh, moreover, uh, in terms of the motivation and innovation cybersecurity, this is more about the urgency of implementation and the easiness. So as we mentioned in our presentation previously, uh, motivation is something that uh, is already implemented pretty well in uh, carry logistics uh, operations right now, which means that it shouldn't be anything foreign to them. Uh, moreover, it's uh, something that could immediately increase the efficiency of operations. And the reason why we put cybersecurity in front of sustainability is again due to the critical nature of the um, security of the data and databases. Uh, referencing one of the case studies from uh, FedEx in 2017, um, they actually experienced a malware attack um, where they lost over 400 million US dollars in potential revenue and disrupted operations very, very uh, in a long period of time, taking almost six or seven months to actually recuperate uh, these losses and return everything to normal. And so this should be a higher priority than, again, the sustainability measures, which actually are already in motion with the uh, two new electric trucks um, that Hailand has, has implemented a while back. So that's the explanation of why. 